so these are some of the myths that we're going to bust. Um, are there any specific medicines to prevent or treat the new coronavirus? To date, there's no specific medicine recommended to protect, prevent or treat the new corona, coronavirus or COVID-19. However, those infected with the virus should receive appropriate care to relieve and treat symptoms and those with severe illness should receive optimal, optimized supportive care. Some specific treatments are under investigation and will be tested through clinical trials. The WHO is helping to accelerate, accelerate research and develop developmental efforts with a range of partners. Do vaccines against pneumonia protect you against the new coronavirus? No vaccines against pneumonia, such as the pneumococcal vaccine and the Haemophilus influenza type B vaccine, do not provide protection against the new coronavirus. The virus is so new and different that it needs its own vaccine. Researchers are trying to develop a vaccine against COVID-19 and World Health Organization is supporting their efforts. Although these vaccines are not effective against COVID-19, vaccination against respiratory illnesses is highly recommended to protect your health. Are antibiotics effective in preventing and treating the new coronavirus? No, antibiotics do not work against viruses, only bacteria. The new coronavirus, COVID-19, is a virus and therefore antibiotics should not be used as a means of prevention or treatment. However, if you are hospitalized for the COVID-19, you may receive antibiotics since bacterial co-infection is possible. So what should you do if you think you have COVID-19? Well, first thing to do is stay home. Do not go to emergency or the clinic. There is a self-assessment that is online and that is on the Alberta Health Services website. You self-monitor, you self-isolate, and you keep yourself in isolation. So you can call the BTDH helpline, which is 403-737-8411, or you can call HealthLink at 811. And just um, a reminder that HealthLink right now is receiving high volume of calls and it could take up to an hour to an hour and a half to reach somebody. And then just with diagnosing coronavirus or COVID-19, it's based on the symptoms and are confirmed through laboratory tests, which include blood tests, nasal swabs and throat swabs. So with self-assessment, if you think you have COVID-19 19 symptoms or have been in close contact with someone who has it. Use this self-assessment to help determine if you have, if you need to seek further care. If you are having difficulty breathing or experiencing other severe symptoms, call 911 immediately. Advise them of your symptoms and travel history. If you are feeling unwell with any of the following symptoms, fever, a new cough or difficulty breathing or a combination of these symptoms, muscle aches, fatigue, headaches, sore throat, runny nose, diarrhea. Symptoms in young children may also be nonspecific. For example, if they're feeling tired, um, have no energy or have po are feeding poorly. And if you have experienced any of the following, if you have traveled outside of Canada in the last 14 days, if it does anyone you, does someone you are in close contact with have COVID-19, for example, someone in your household or workplace, are you in close contact with a person who is sick with respiratory symptoms, for example, fever, cough, or difficulty breathing, who recently traveled outside of Canada? If you answered yes to these questions, you should seek clinical assessment for COVID-19 over the phone. The majority of the COVID-19 illnesses are mild. A clinician can help guide whether you will require further care or potential testing in person. Please use one of the following options. 
If you start to experience worsening symptoms, please visit your local emergency department. Um, call before you go and let them know you have used this self-assessment tool. If you answered no to these questions, it is unlikely that you have COVID-19. You should continue to monitor your health for a full 14 days after your return to Ontario or Alberta um, or have contact with someone who is ill. If you develop any new symptoms, please seek clinical assessment. And testing for COVID-19. Learn more about self-monitoring. If you start to feel worse or have questions or concerns about your health, call your local public health unit primary care provider. For example, your family doctor. Okay, so is self-isolation mandatory? It is not mandatory. Alberta Health and Alberta Health Services will continue monitoring the situation to assess any needs for adjustment. And what does self-isolation mean? So self-isolation means avoiding situations where you could infect other people. This means all situations where you may come into contact with others, such as at social gatherings, work, school, childcare, athletic events, university, faith-based gatherings, healthcare facilities, grocery stores, restaurants, shopping malls, and all public gatherings. You should, wherever possible, not use public transportation, including buses, taxis, or ride sharing. As much as possible, you should limit contact with people other than the family members or companions who you travel with. You should avoid having visitors to your home, but it is okay for friends, family, or delivery drivers to drop off food. You can also use delivery or pickup services for errands such as grocery shopping. Avoid sharing household items such as dishes, drinking glasses, cups, eating utensils, towels, pillows, or other items with other people in your home. After using these items, you should wash them thoroughly with soap and water, place in the dishwasher for cleaning, or wash in the washing machine. Wash your hands often with soap and water and regularly clean and disinfect frequently touched and shared surfaces, such as doorknobs, counters, cell phones, phones. If you need to leave your home for an urgent errand, such as picking up an essential medication, as a pre precaution to reduce risk of spread, you should wear a surgical mask while you are out. During this time, it is important that you monitor your health for symptoms like fever or cough and call HealthLink or our support line on the blood reserve if you have any concerns. So how can I protect myself and my family? Wash your hands often and well. Avoid touching your face, nose or mouth with unwashed hands. Avoid close contact with people who are sick. Clean and disinfect surfaces that are frequently touched. Stay at home and away from others if you are feeling ill. When sick, cover your cough and sneezes and then wash your hands. And these are just some resources we have on hand for you if you'd like. You can, we can um, figure out some way to get them out to the public. So wash your hands. Wash your hands with soap and water when hands are visibly soiled. If your hands are not visibly dirty, you can use an alcohol-based hand rub or soap and water. So just to reiterate it, washing your hands after coughing and sneezing, when caring for someone who is sick, before, during, and after you prepare food, before eating, after toilet use, when hands are visibly dirty, after handling animals or animal waste. Protect others from getting sick, so when coughing and sneezing, cover mouth and nose with flexed elbow or tissue. Throw tissue into closed bin immediately after use. Clean hands with alcohol-based hand rub or soap and water after coughing or sneezing and when caring for the sick. Protect others from getting sick, so avoid close contact when you are experiencing cough and fever. Avoid spitting in public. If you have fever, cough, and difficulty breathing, seek, me seek medical care immediately and share previous travel history with your health care provider. 
and practice food safety. So use different chopping boards and knives for raw meat and cooked foods. Wash your hands between handling raw and cooked food. Uh, sick animals and animals that have died of diseases should not be eaten. So this is just a guide on um, preparing yourself if you have to be in quarantine or self-isolation um, during the 14-day period. This is for 72 hours, but it is a suggestion on um, planning ahead, communicating, making sure you're staying informed, and then just a shopping list. These guides we have at the health unit, and you just need to call us and let us know and we'll get them out to you. So should you cancel or change travel plans? If you recently returned from travel outside of Canada or have symptoms such as cough, fever, fatigue, or difficulty breathing, stay home, do not go to ER or clinic, take the COVID-19 self-assessment test, um, call HealthLink 811 for testing and instructions, and right now, the Government of Canada is recommending that Canadians avoid non-essential travel and consider postponing travel to countries with coronavirus, COVID-19 outbreaks due to unknown or sustained community spread of COVID-19. Before traveling, verify if the authorities of both your current location and your destination have implemented any restrictions that may affect your travel plans, including entry requirements, border closures, and flight suspensions. So for the most up-to-date information, you can follow this website here on the PowerPoint. You can copy and paste it. So when to use a mask? So use a mask when sick. Wearing a mask helps preventing passing on illness to other people. That is why we ask people who have a cough or respiratory symptoms to wear a mask and clean their hands when visiting an emergency department or a clinic. Wearing masks in public with the goal of preventing spread of illness can be a way some communities show respect to others. While we do not recommend wearing masks for healthy individuals, it's important that any person who does wear a mask is treated with respect and not fear. We ask that you do not make assumptions about the risk of others having novel coronavirus based on their ethnicity or country of origin. N95 masks or respirator masks require special fitting and testing in order to be effective. We strongly recommend against members of the public using N95 masks as they make it more difficult to breathe for some individuals, especially those with a chronic breathing problem. They provide little, if any, benefit beyond that provided by a procedure mask. So we always remember too that for healthy people, wear a mask only if you are taking care of a person with suspected coronavirus, COVID-19. Wear a mask if you are coughing or sneezing. Masks are effective only when used in combination with frequent hand cleaning with alcohol-based hand rub or soap and water. If you wear a mask, when you, then you must know how to use it and dispose of it properly. And before putting on a mask, clean hands with alcohol-based hand rub or soap and water. And when taking off a mask, wash your hands also.